welcome to episode four of Electronics Club. Boom, baby! Okay, Fantastic. Harrison, how are you doing? Good. Well, what have you been up to this week in terms of sort of STEM, science, engineering type stuff? Nice and loud. Well, I guess this could be one. I've made like a den outside because I thought... Why do why do school work inside when you can just build a massive den outside? Yeah, he did. He made a massive den out of uh, wood, uh, made a desk, uh, and one of those big uh, sort of balloon, th- and one of the called parachutes. They're called parachutes. Oh, yeah. um, you got it when you were a little kid, didn't you? Yeah. And you kind of little 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 toddlers roll under them, and you know you make the nice wavy patterns. But uh, Harrison has kept that and turned it into a waterproof roof. For a den, which is quite good. That's an engineering type thing. Cool. There are some structural elements. What about this? Because this is one of your favourite books. Uh, it's called Cool Science Tricks, 50 Fantastic Feats for Kids of All Ages. And it's all about kind of STEM, science, engineeringly related stuff. Um, I believe you were playing with something on page 54. Yeah. Why, don't you, why don't you demonstrate? Yeah. It's called the Airborne Ping Pong Ball. Okay, cool. So I like it. you need a... Um, uh, oh, my God. Did I just forget what these are called? Hair dryer. Hair dryer, yeah. Hair and you dryer. need a, a, a I need a hair ball. dryer. Uh, it doesn't have to be this. It's normally a ping pong ball. I think that... Is nice and loud, ball. yeah. And um, you get the hair dryer, a dryer to obviously turn it on. I, have you plugged I'll turn it, in? it on to... Um, yeah, I plugged it in, I think. Okay, cool. I'll turn it on to Max. Max! Not even messing yes. about. Amazing! Harrison, it levitates. That's absolutely incredible. Oh, that's so cool. Have you any idea, says he, attempting to uh, check out the description in the book, how that works? How does it work? Well, I, re- I read that and it said it was to do with like gravity um, from the ball that pulls it down. And then the air pushes it yeah. up. Two interesting things are happening. The first is gravity. Would you like to do it again while I explain? Have you got the ball or has it gone rogue? I, th- I think it's just like... Has it gone rogue? Yeah, it's ran off. Okay. You get it and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll explain. The first is a gravity. As you very, very correctly stated, Harrison, the air produced by the dryer pushes the ball up while gravity is doing its best to pull it down. Both of which you stated. Go for it. Okay, the ball finds the point at which these two forces balance each other out and stays there levitating. And the second thing happening is air pressure. Fast moving air creates low pressure and the stream of air coming out of the hairdryer creates a column of low pressure around the ball. The higher pressure outside the column prevents the ball from moving out of the stream or it doesn't, as he just demonstrated. That's great. Everything's falling down. It's chaos. Don't worry about it. Great. Science in action. Pop, pop it down there. Yeah, there's a project that we've been working on every week, um, and it's our scratch game, which um, we've been working on quite diligently. I think you're going to be very impressed because we've made leaps and bounds, haven't we? Yeah. Leaps and bounds on our Electronics Club. Sort of geometry dash inspired game that's now becoming a little bit more like a platformer. Should be. Left and right, and then use this the space game bar. Even harder than the other one. Yeah, it is. I'm just going to. Switch what? over to our second camera again, Let so that you can jumping. get a good, so you can get a good, yeah, space oh, oh, yeah. bar. Oh yeah. Space bar, brother. There you go. It's, it's so hard, I can't. Okay, the good thing about this is I didn't put any music on it. How about that, guys? So we've got our scratch cat from the last uh, three episodes, and that sort of um, landscape with the clouds and the green hills and all that stuff, and we've made it far more geometry dash. You need to click with the mouse to restart the flag, and it will go back to the beginning. Um, but I love the character. I'm really pleased with the characterization that we've made. Uh, we need to get you some music in there and some jump. sound you can effects. Double jump and stuff. Say again? You can double jump and do things like that. Yeah, it can. That, that was another feature that we had to enable. It's been very, very challenging. Uh, can you pause a sec? Jump out of the full screen view, please, Harrison, with the mouse. Good. So we can show everyone at home the code, which isn't going to be that easy to see on this phone, but there we go. There's the code. Sorry, Harrison, just pause there. Um, so you can see it's, it's significantly moved on. There's a lot more complexity there than there was last time. Uh, I'm ever so pleased with it. Are you pleased with that? Yeah. We've worked really hard on this, haven't we? Uh, that's, that's the code there. Um, if you want to play this game, uh, then we're going to upload it to Scratch, to their main website, the MIT Scratch one, whatever it is, and you'll be able to download it and play it and play with the code and maybe probably make it even better than us. Um, but I'm very happy with that. 
really happy with that. Okay, good. All right, run, press the round of applause button. Second one in from the top. That's it. Do it, baby. Oh, absolutely brilliant. So far, so good. Right, so um, the other uh, important feature that we have on the show each week is that um, we ask those of you with cool setups to send them in to us. Uh, and what I mean by that is the burgeoning world of gaming setups. It seems now that everyone who's into gaming recognizes the need to keep a tidy gaming area, which is often a bedroom, which is yeah. good for moms and dads at the end of the day, uh, and to take some good footage of it, keep it really cool, put some LEDs in there, accentuate the console or PC that is at the center of their gaming experience and share uh, their setup with the world. And that's what we've done. We've got another setup which has been shared this week. Can you say what that says there, Harrison? That's the name of the guy who sent it in. Yeah. Kicks. That's it. Kicks. Yeah. How do you spell it? K-I-C-K-Z. Yeah. Uh, they've got a microphone for streaming look. He's got fantastic Razer stickers on the top of his gaming rig there. Um, double monitors so he can stream and chat and all the rest of it. Nice pair of headphones. Big, big format mouse mat there. Beautiful. Absolutely superb. What a great setup that is. I think it's an absolute beauty. Look at that gaming chair. That's a cracker, isn't it? Well done uh, to kick second one in, please. And maybe the third one out to give him a bit of an air horn as well because I think he deserves it. Um, we all deserve an air horn, you know, what with lockdown and everything. So, um, yeah, that's good. So send us your gaming setup. Maybe uh, also your Scratch game or your nomination for a Scratch game that you like. Yeah. Is that good? Yeah. Bring it in. Ow. Yeah, man. Maybe I, I was a bit over-enthusiastic with that high five. Yeah. Right, okay, so... Uh, as I was referring to uh, earlier on in the week, um, sorry, in the show, yeah. um, we've been building a electronics project using a Raspberry Pi kit, a breadboard and some components. And we've been doing different things with it each week. The first week we did a flashing LED. Yeah. Second week, can you remember what we did? Uh, was it that heat sensor? Yep, heat sensing circuit using a little thermometer um, sensor. And then we... Uh, in the third week, you weren't very well. Your brother stepped in. We made a, a, a games controller. You missed out there. Uh, that was wicked. We played uh, Tetris, and that was absolutely superb. This week, we're doing something uh, um, that combines weeks one and two. Do you want to just bring the camera? Do you want to be camera operator? Yeah. Could you just hold it there really yeah. steady, though? Because if you wobble that around, it's going to be crazy. So we'll just cut up that shot so you've got a sense of it. Nice, steady work, dude. So um, what you're looking at here is the fully assembled project that you can find on maplin.co.uk slash electronics club. You're looking at um, the combination of two projects, uh, the temperature sensor circuit, which is this side here. Maybe you can go in a bit closer there as well. Let me, let me grab it. Zooming in. Yeah. That's that side of the circuit. And then not one of the LED circuits from week two, but three of them. So they're just repeated. Now, I know it looks complicated but you can see how to build this with really clear instructions that i went through myself to build this with images that match what we're showing you if not in exactly the same orientation on maplin.co.uk slash electronics club uh, and i should tell you about those guys family run business uh, i've been a maplin customer for years we were doing this project thinking of doing stuff just for everyone uh, around stem for youngsters uh, in lockdown and Maplin said tell you what we like that idea we'll help you out you can get the stem kit that we use each week with the breadboard and leds and little buttons and various bits and pieces as well as the raspberry pi and the keyboard and the mouse for cost okay enough said maplin.co.uk slash electronics club for instructions let me take you through this the concept behind this is it turns the thermometer the, the temperature sensor there into a visual device right and this is how you see it. Now, what, we, what we're going to see is if the temperature is 21 degrees or above, this first light's going to light up. If it's, I forget what it was, 22, 23, I think. The second one goes, I'll have a look in the code in a minute. And then 25, beyond 25, and the third light comes on. It might look complicated, but trust me, it's dead simple. Right, okay. So what I want to do now is show you uh, the code. So I'm going to go to my very flash vision mixer stroke keyboard um, and uh, load up the code that again is found on the aforementioned website you just download it i've whacked it onto a usb memory stick which you can see there look that's it there that's got the code on it all right so when i, when I bring the code up in a moment you'll um you'll know where it's coming from 
Okay, so let's bring that code up, Harry. So you go to programming. I'm going to step away from the microphone a second. Hang on. Programming. Down to Thony Python. It's a weird name, isn't it? So we're using Python for this rather than Scratch, which we've used previously. I'm going to get rid of that there. Now, Harrison, you're in control now. Okay. I want you to go to load. Okay. Okay, there we go. And then you go to the, it's called uh, Thermometer Python, I think. Yeah. Is that right? Boom, boom. And then you run the code, having loaded it off that memory stick. It does a little test on the LEDs where the first light goes on. And then the second light and then the third light. And yeah, then cool. if you're over 21 degrees, then what you get is the first light lighting up. Now that I can show you because that has just happened. Now, if you blow on that like this. There you go. Second one's lit up. Oh my because God. we only want to go. We only want it to go to 22 Celsius. We don't want it to go above that yet, which is what the hairdryer would do almost immediately. So now, can you blow on it? Can you do that? I'm at, I'm just, just go for it. Yeah. Do it more, much more than that. Loads more. Keep going. There you go. You've done it. 22. Now, if you get your hairdryer out, yeah, go for it. The warm one. It's burning right oh my now, God. Too. So there you go. Yeah. Yeah, the hairdryer works really well. Maybe works brilliantly. Look at that. Okay, good lad. <laughs> Should we try the laser? Yeah. Yes, brilliant. That works really well. Those temperatures are going way up there. That's absolutely superb. Well done. Well done, Harrison. But that was brilliant. And that was Electro Electronics Club. Uh, we're uh, potentially back here next week. We're not sure. We might be able to squeeze in a fifth and final project in this run. It's only been organised for lockdown. Um, and so it depends what's happening with this crazy situation. But if we're still here, then we will do one next week. We'll make up a project uh, using the same kit. Check out the uh, project details. Uh, on mapping.co.uk slash electronics club send us some tweets send us some instagrams search some love and apart from that that's it we'll see you same place same time uh, you can press any button you like yeah press them that's a great noise uh, next Wednesday potentially 4pm love ya enjoy lockdown keep it STEM keep it geeky